Welcome to chemistry class with your teacher, Anakwa Christopher GK. All right, in this particular video, we are going to be looking at a very important topic in chemistry and an element in chemistry, which is sulfur. So the topic of this particular video or this particular class is sulfur and is expected by the end of the class or this by the end of this video, you should learn, at least be able to explain the atomic structure and configuration of sulfur. Number two is your, you should be able to list the allotropes of sulfur, then explain the extraction of sulfur. You should also be able to state the properties of sulfur, physical properties and chemical properties of sulfur, and finally align the uses of sulfur. These are the things we want to look at in this particular video, and we're going to take them one after the other. So first of all, what actually is sulfur? Sulfur is a yellow solid non-metal. It's a yellow solid non-metal, meaning that sulfur is not a metal, rather it's a non-metal. It has atomic number of 16. It's the 16th element in the periodic table with electronic configuration of first 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2 and 3p4. This is the electronic configura electron configuration of sulfur. Count it now, it's going to give you 16. Of course, it is in group four of the periodic table and uh, period three. It's in group four and it's in period three in the periodic table. And it occurs in combined form as gypsum, as pyrite, that means iron pyrite, galena, then an epsilon salt. So these are the areas uh, and others, how it occurred in the combined state, in combined form. So it appears as occurs there as calcium sulfate with hydrated uh, uh, calcium sulfate, hydrated calcium tetraoso sulfate six, and the uh, pyrite is uh, iron pyrite. We have it here. Uh, galena is, is lead sulfide. That is the meaning. Then epsilon salt is magnesium tetraoso sulfate uh, for hydrated pentahydrate, hydrated one. So these are the areas more modern how where it occurs in a combined state. We also have it. It also occurs in a combined state as a hydrogen sulfide in petroleum, uh, cold gas, and natural gas. It's also, also occurred in combined state in that form when it appears there. And uh, it is seen, it can be seen also in plants and animals. That means it is present in protein building foods in plants and animals. Now, another thing is that sulfur is a polyatomic element. A molecule of it contains eight atoms of sulfur. Just a molecule, a molecule of it contains eight atoms of, of sulfur arranged in a crown shaped ring, uh, covalently bonded to each other. That is why we have molecule of sulfur as S8. And the structure looks like a crown shaped. Look at it. We, this is how the structure is 1x, 2x, 3x, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. This is the structure and the, the shape of sulfur. All right. Uh, how can it be extracted? Since it's been found in a combined form and uh, it's not found free, over 90% of the world's sulfur is obtained from underground deposits in the US which is about 150 to 500 meters below the ground. And it is covered by layers of sand. And because of that, the mining method was impossible. So the sulfur is extracted by a French process. This process, how does it go? It involves boring a hole about 30 cm in diameter through the clay, sand, limestone, to the sulfur bed. That means a hole will be bored 
and uh, the boring is being lined with iron pipe and inside the iron pipe there is a support pumps of about three concentric tubes which terminate in the in a reservoir of larger diameter now a super heated water water that is being heated heavily of about 120 to 200 C, um, uh, degrees Celsius is pumped down to the sulfur bed to melt the sulfur and a hot compressed air will be forced down through the inside tube to push the melted sulfur and the water to the middle tube. Now the sulfur is run into large tank where it solidifies and can be separated from the water. The sulfur now obtained is about it's about 99.5% uh, pure. So in this in this process, pure sulfur is being obtained. So so anything that is up to 99.5% is a pure substance. So a pure sulfur is obtained. Look at the, 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 the setup of the extraction of sulfur. You can see where hot air is being pumped. It's being pumped into the, the, the price process and um, the, the, uh, this is the outlet of the, of the molten sulfur where it will not go there and solidify. This is the heated water that I talked of. It will be pumped into here, it goes down as you can see, this is the, the movement. This is now the movement uh, of the molten sulfur, and it will solidify them. This is the shape of the extraction of sulfur. All right, sulfur has allotropes. So there are four allotropes of sulfur. Number one is rhombic sulfur, which can be represented as alpha sulfur. And that one is monoclinic or uh, prismatic sulfur number two and uh, number three is amorphous sulfur and the uh, four is plastic sulfur and with dicks we are going to explain them one after the other what is rhombic sulfur this uh, rhombic sulfur is the most suitable allotropes at temperature below 96 degrees celsius as long as 96 degrees celsius is very very suitable the most suitable among all the allotropes of carbon allotropes of uh, sulfur sorry it, it it is prepared by dissolving powdered rose sulfur and carbon four sulfide and leaving the solvent to evaporate slowly now it should be prepared it should be prepared in fume cubicle why carbon four sulfide is poisonous and highly inflammable so because of that, we prepare it in the few people that we normally see in our commercial labs or in our laboratories. Now the crystals form have orthohedra shape, orthohedra shape. The shape is orthohedra and the large crystals are formed when evaporation is extremely low. Large crystals are formed when evaporation is extremely low. So for that reason, this, this is the shape, orthohedral shape. I said that the shape is orthohedral and look at it, rhombic sulfur. This is the shape of rhombic sulfur. And the next one we have is monoclinic sulfur. And this is another allotrope of sulfur. And how is it? It's obtained by putting two grams of powdered roll sulfur once again in a crucible and it's being heated strongly until the roll melts into amber colored liquids. Now, the liquid sulfur is poured into double thickness cone of filter paper. And when it's been done that way, the, the liquid will then cool until the skin first form on the surface. Open the filter paper and you will see needle-shaped crystal. And this needle-shaped crystal is what we call monoclinic sulfur. All right, look at it. Look at how it looks like how it looks like. That is it. Monoclinic sulfur can change to rhombic if allowed to cool below um, 96 degrees Celsius. It is unsuitable at ordinary temperature, but stable above 95.6, above 96 degrees Celsius. 
you know that the, the most suitable of that below that 96 is that of the um rhombic sulfur so this one is very very unsuitable it can change to rhombic when it's below 96. all right um another thing we need to know about this monoclinic uh sulfur is this is suitable between 96 degrees celsius to 119 degrees celsius that means above 96 degrees celsius but below it it will change to rhombic to rhombic sulfur another thing is that like rhombic sulfur it contains six eight molecules of sulfur s eight molecules eight atoms of um, sulfur in one molecule that's meaning eight atoms of sulfur in one molecule of um sulfur number three is that it 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 is crystalline and the crystals are thin needle-like shape as we saw in the shape as we see it now so it is crystalline and the crystalline is like a needle thin uh, needle-like shape all right what are the differences between the rhombic and the monoclinic sulfur number one is that rhombic is yellow transparent crystalline while the other one is uh, the monoclinic is transparent amber crystal now number two is that suitable uh, rhombic is stable at temperature below 96 while monoclinic is unstable at temperature below 96. the third one is rhombic is higher it has higher density than monoclinic why monoclinic has lower density than rhombic then the number fourth one is that rhombic is has lower melting point while monoclinic has higher melting point lastly is that the shape of rhombic is autohedra in shape while that of the monoclinic is needle like shape as of course we have talked about that before so let's look at the next allotrope of carbon which is amorphous sulfur what is it how is it look like or uh, what how is it being prepared this amorphous carbon is prepared i'm um, sorry amorphous sulfur sorry amorphous sulfur is prepared as a pale yellow deposit when a saturated solution of hydrogen sulfide is exposed to air look at hydrogen sulfide when it's been exposed to air exposed to air reaction with air is it will form sulfur look at it look at this it will form this this type of sulfur that it will form of course it still has eight mole eight atoms of sulfur in one molecule now a, a, a boy the nature is amorphous amorphous sulfur it is prepared by the it can also be prepared by the action of um dilute hydrochloric acid on on a triozo sulfate six solution now this is supposed to be one f that is it Look at the, 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 the reaction and the sulfur is being formed. This sulfur is amorphous sulfur. All right, amorphous sulfur has no regular crystalline shape. That's why we call it amorphous. Anything amorphous shows that it doesn't have a regular shape. It's not a crystalline, uh, it doesn't have shape. It doesn't, it's not a crystalline, uh, it's a shapeless, let me use the word, shapeless sulfur. It is in form of a white powdered powder and is amorphous in shape it's shapeless is is powder that's why we call it amorphous um sulfur all right the next one is plastic sulfur this is also another type of uh, allotrope of sulfur and then how is it prepared it's been prepared by heating yellow sulfur in a test tube and the boiling sulfur is poured in a thin continuous stream into a beaker full of cold water it will form long elastic light yellow ribbon of plastic sulfur it is insoluble in, in carbon four sulfide after a few days the plastic sulfur turns to hard rhombic sulfur so it is not a true allotrope of sulfur because after some days it will turn to rhombic sulfur and the, what we have explained now about after heating it you pour it into a a, a continuous um a continuous stream into a beaker look at it here look at the shape this is a multi sulfur after being heated it's been poured look at how it's been poured as it's pouring into a cold water it's forming this particular shape 
is forming this particular shape, plastic elastic, elastic or rib, we call it ribbon of elastic sulfur. That is it. That is for plastic sulfur, and that is the last um, uh, allotrope of sulfur. However, it's not a true allotrope of sulfur, but it's one of it anyway. All right. The next thing now we need to look at is the properties of plastic sulfur. Plastic sulfur is soft and elastic. It does not dissolve in carbon four uh, sulfide. On standard, it loses its plasticity and reverts or changes to bromic sulfur. That means after some time, after some days. Therefore, it is unsuitable and not considered to be a true allotrope of uh, sulfur. Once again, just get that uh, into your heart because after some days, after some time, it's changed to bromic sulfur. Once again, which is the most suitable sulfur. Uh, allotropes of sulfur among them. Okay, um, what are the now the chemical properties of sulfur? Effect of sulfur on heat. When sulfur is heated gently, followed by strong heating, sulfur changes from yellow to orange to brown, giving amber color. Mobile liquid at a degree Celsius of 119 degrees Celsius. Increase in temperature, which increase, increase in temperature uh result in darkening of the liquid which suddenly changes to viscous at about 180 degrees celsius further increase in temperature that bring about increase in mobility of the sulfide and the color gets darker but at at but as at 444 degrees celsius the sulfur boils and give brown red brown vapor so of course, in heating, it changes. You undergo from one color to another color, but its heat has effect on color appearance or physical uh, appearance or, or states. Number two is that sulfur can combine with many metals and non-metals to form sulfide and um, oxygen to form oxide. If it's for react with metals, it will form a sulfide of it, and with uh, oxygen, it will form uh, an oxide. So sulfur can react with a metal ion to form ion two sulfides. It can react with uh, os uh, sulfur, uh, oxygen, a non-metal, to form, to form sulfur four oxide. Sulfur bonds with blue flame in oxygen to give, give sulfur four oxide. It can also react with carbon, it will give you a colorless liquid. All right. What of oxidation? Does it oxidize? Of course, it does. When carbon is heated with H2SO4, which is a, a hydrogen tetraoxide of a six, in evaporating, evaporating dish, irritating fumes of sulfur four oxide are evolved. You can see it so far when it's being heated with H2SO4. Sulfur four oxide will be formed. That means that this sulfur is oxidized to sulfur four oxide. That is it. It's been oxidized to sulfur four oxide. Oxidation. It's been oxidized. All right. With conk HNO3, brown fume of nitrogen four oxide are evolved, and sulfur four sulfur is oxidized to this time around to acid. You can see when sulfur reacts with a uh, HNO3, which is an acid, it will form uh, uh, hydrochloric uh, uh, tetraoxo of acid, or we call it hydrogen triozo of uh, hydrogen tetraoxo of six. It will form this. But with oxygen, sulfur bonds with a blue flame, forming sulfur four oxide. We have talked about that before. Here, here, it forms sulfur four oxide. All right. Okay, the physical properties of sulfur. Sulfur is a yellow solid. Sulfur is insoluble in water, but soluble in sulfur four sulfide, uh, carbon four sulfide. It is soluble in carbon four sulfide, but insoluble in water. It is poor conductor of heat and electricity, and it has a melting point of 119 degrees Celsius and boil, boiling point of 444. Zero, deg uh, zero degrees Celsius. 
444 degrees Celsius. Sorry. And finally, the density depends on allotropic form. It depends on the particular allotrope because all the allotropes do, do not have the same density. Just like the way we compare uh, the uh, drumbic sulfur and uh, monoclinic sulfur, two of them do not have the same density. Uh, monoclinic has higher density than that of the drumbic sulfur. All right. Uses. What can we use sulfur for? Number one is that sulfur can be used in manufacturing of tetraoxide of acid acid. Number two is in production of important chemicals like carbon four sulfide and the carbon hydrogen tetraoxide sulfate. Hydrogen, carbon hydrogen triosyl sulfate uh, four, and it can act as both as an insecticide and a germicide. All right. Um, next, number four is that it can be used in manufacture of drugs and uh, example, this is M, M and B, which is an antibiotic. Uh, it can also be used in manufacture of uh, bleaching agents used in the uh, in pepper production. It can also be used as sulfide in manufacture of uh, matches, fireworks, and uh, gum powder. Lastly, is that it can be it can be used for the vulcanization of rubber, vulcanization of rubber. All right, so far we have talked about uh, sulfur, the, the existence of currents, the structure, uh, the structure, the co electron configuration, the electrodes of sulfur, uh, the, the physical and chemical properties of sulfur, and the uses of sulfur. For further discussion and inquiry, you can get to me through my phone line or WhatsApp line, plus 2348. 8065573229, or you can get to me through my email address at christo116 at gmail.com. Thank you for being part of this class and remember to watch the next video, which is outside of sulfur. Thank you and remain blessed.